I praise and thank God for this beautiful opportunity God has given us to come in His presence this evening to study His Word. Let's close our eyes, bow our head, and let's pray asking the Lord's help as we study the serious subject, the Ark of the Covenant, the most holy object that was there in the tabernacle. Let's pray. Father, we praise you and thank you. Thank you, Lord, for this beautiful opportunity that you have given us. Lord, you have been leading and guiding us each day. And as your coming draws nearer and nearer, we pray today's Bible session is a blessing for all of us. Help us to understand the mysteries. Your word is there before us. Bless each one of us with the spirit of wisdom and understanding so that we are able to know you more and we may grow up to your stature and your name is glorified. Bless the session. Lead us and guide us. In Jesus' most holy name we pray. Amen. I thank God for this opportunity. Past week, we have been looking at the material that has been used for making the Ark of the Covenant. And we, were, we, we studied for two to three sessions concerning in regard to that material. And I believe that the Lord is helping us to understand the mystery of godliness. God manifested in the flesh. Just to rewind, John chapter 1, verse 14. John chapter 1, verse 14. Here we read, And the Word was made flesh, and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory, the glory as of the only begotten, of the Father, full of grace and truth. So, we studied why it was important for God to be manifested in the flesh. God Himself. He is our representative. He is our substitute. And He has set the standard for each one of us. When we look at the life of Christ, we can see the irony. The one who owns the whole universe. He didn't own a piece of land or a house here on this earth. He owns the huge universe. On the other hand, look at us. We came on this earth empty-handed. And then when we get a piece of land or we get a house, we are so excited, we are so thankful, and we don't realize that I have to leave it in a few days. I am a pilgrim. I am not here forever. This is just for a few days. So, number one, he didn't own anything. Number two, the one who healed the sick, the one who had created man out of dust, breathed into his nostrils, life. He suffered in our place. Can we return to Isaiah 53? And I want you also to open your Bible so that we can look at the word that the Spirit of God has used. He was a man of sorrows, acquainted with grief. He has carried our sorrows. And verse 4, Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we did not esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. He was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities, and chastisement for our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. So, the one who healed others, couldn't he heal himself? What was the need for him to bear that pain? 
we try our level best to be healed. We don't want pain. We'll try everything. Because we don't like pain. The one who could heal himself, why did he undergo through that pain? Can we look at the mind of God? The mind of Christ? The mind of Christ. The one who cast out demons. He allowed himself to be tempted by Satan. The one who cast out demons allowed himself to be tempted. The one who walked on the water commanded the storms to be quiet, to be still. He patiently faced that temptation for 40 long days. 40 long days. The one who has no sin in him, he tasted death in our place. The one over whom death has no claim, sin has no claim, because sin cannot lay hold on him, death has no claim. Still, he face, he tasted death. So from that we can understand, here as we read, we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace, full of grace and truth. May the Lord help us to know him more. Surely he was the Son of Man, and He was also the Son of God. Son of Man, Son of God. Acacia wood used in making the ark. Today, let's turn to uh, Exodus chapter 25. Exodus chapter 25, verse 10. Exodus chapter 25, verse 10. And they shall make an ark of acacia wood. Two cubits and a half shall be the length thereof, and a cubit and a half the breadth thereof, and a cubit and a half the height thereof. The first portion, thou shalt make an ark of acacia wood, we already studied. Now we are going to the next part, the measurement of the Ark of the Covenant. And may the Lord help us to understand. The measurement that, this, that God has given is, it is two cubits and a half shall be the length. And a cubit and a half the breadth and a cubit and a half the height. So. The Ark of the Covenant, it's different from the altar of incense. Can you see the difference? Here, the height is more than the length and the width. But in the Ark, the length is more while the width and the height is the same. Now, what does that mean? Why has the Spirit of God given such a measurement? I, I pray because it, the Lord has a purpose behind everything. There is a meaning behind everything. Everything in the ark, everything in our life, Everything that happens, there is a meaning. And blessed are those who can sit in God's presence and understand the reason behind everything that's happening. So, as we study about the measurement, here the 
Scripture says two cubits and a half. One cubit and a half. Why a half? Can it not be just two and one? Or three cubits and two cubit two cubits? Why half? What does the Spirit of God mean here? This is not the full revelation. This is just the half. God has not revealed Himself completely here in the tabernacle. Half. Let's turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 9. 1 Corinthians. Chapter 13, verse 9. For we know in part and we prophesy in part. We know in part. God has not revealed himself completely, but he has just revealed that much as is required for us. I hope we are able to understand. He has just revealed a half means just half, not completely. To understand the meaning of the whole thing, let's turn to 1 King chapter 10, verse 6 and 7. 1 King chapter 10, verse 6 and 7. And she said to the king, It was a true report that I heard in mine own land of thy acts and of thy wisdom. Howbeit I believe not the words until I came, and my eyes have seen it, and behold, half was not told me. Thy wisdom and prosperity exceeded the fame which I heard. Again, I'll read that portion. And she said to the king, It was a true report that I heard in mine own land of thy acts and of thy wisdom. How bit? I believe not the words. How bit? I believe not the words until I came. And my eyes have seen it, and behold, the half was not told to me. So, I just, I'm using this verse so that we are just able to understand. The Queen Sheba, she says, Everything was not told, just the half. Just the half. Now when I come here and see, that's when I realize what has been told is the truth. Same way, in the Old Testament, the high priest is standing before the ark. The priests are carrying the ark. The ark inside the tabernacle. The measurement itself reveals God has not revealed His complete glory. Just a portion. Now, why doesn't God reveal His glory completely? To understand that, if He had revealed Himself completely. You remember what happened to Saul on the way to Damascus? He fell down and was blind for three days. Blind for three days. John on the Isle of Patmos, when he saw someone like the Son of Man in his glory, John fell down as dead. Look at Jesus, God. Manifested in the flesh, the Son of Man, as He walks. Thirty-three and a half years He spent on this earth. He could have revealed His full glory. He could have. He could have manifested Himself in the manger. If He had revealed His full glory while He was in the temple, cleansing the temple, 
at the time of baptism, during the time of ministry, will man ever be able to understand the desire, the love, the nature of God? Can you see how he, he, he walked the way he talked? People did not realize. People did not understand. But yes, there were few who understood. He, they could see the glimpse of who he was and it was the Spirit of God who revealed. So as a child of God, New Testament times, we the church, hasn't God revealed himself to us? more clear than he had revealed to the Old Testament saints? Do I want to know him more? Paul says, I count everything profitable as dung, so that I may know him more. Do we have a yearning? That's where you and I need to analyze our own life. Do I have that yearning? Lord, I want to know you more. If I don't have that yearning, there is something seriously wrong with my spiritual life. I am drifting away from God, drifting away closer to the world as we study the word. Let us, let us look at our own life, own life, and Make sure that hunger is there. Next. Now, one and a half, two and a half. Look at the numbers. Two and a half is half of five. One and a half is half of three. Again, I'll say, two and a half is half of five. One and a half is half of three. As you have already attended the previous classes, the numbers that are used, each number has a meaning. And I've already shared about those numbers in my previous classes, so just wanted to remind you. Number one, it stands for God. Number two, union. Man and woman, Christ and the church, Old Testament, New Testament, union. Number three, it stands for manifestation, completeness. Number three. Number four, it stands for creation. Number five, that's God's grace. Six, man and human weakness. Seven, that's God's perfect number, foundation of God's word. It shows completeness and perfection. Number eight, new beginning. Nine, finality or divine completeness. Ten, that's the perfect number. The law, responsibility. Eleven, disorder, chaos and judgment. It's opposite of ten. Twelve. Perfection, it symbolizes God's power and authority, serving as perfect government foundation, completeness. Thirteen stands for rebellion and lawlessness, outright rebellion against God. Fourteen is double measure of spiritual perfection, seven into seven, twice seven. Forty is the time of probation. So each number has a spiritual meaning. So now, as we look at 3 and 5, number 3, it shows a manifestation. Christ rose again from the dead on the third day. 3 reveals the Holy Trinity, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Manifestation. God manifesting himself rose again from the dead, revealed who he is. 
Trinity reveals the heart of God. That's why benediction we say the love of the Father, grace of Son, communion of Holy Spirit, baptism in the name of the three. So, Christ, when we see Christ walking on this earth, that's God manifested in the flesh. Son of man and Son of God. So, next, as we study the word, uh, now, uh, Revelation chapter 2, verse, uh, Revelation chapter 1, verse 17. Let's read Revelation chapter 1, verse 17. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. And he laid his right hand upon me, saying unto me, Fear not, I am the first and the last. Along with that, Revelation chapter 2, verse 17. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the hidden manna, and will give him a white stone, and in that stone a new name written, which no man knoweth except he that receiveth it. I just want to take a portion of this verse. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the hidden manna. What is this hidden manna? Manna shows spiritual food, the word of God. But what is this hidden manna? That means it's not for everyone. It's not for everyone. It's for those who overcome. When we say overcome means those who don't live for their desires. Those who overcome their desires and they live for the Lord. So as we live for Him, we are able to know Him more. He reveals Himself more to us. Today many people, if you look at their lives, God, is not reve God has not revealed Himself completely to them. Because if he reveals, they won't be able to understand. Now, when we look at Christ, if he had revealed his glory completely before the children of Israel, they could have never understood the nature of God, the heart of God, because they were only yearning for an earthly kingdom. Their only desire was to have an earthly kingdom, no more bondage. But God wanted them to know Him more, who He is. Today, when we look at these prosperity preachers and the believers who are after blessing, we feel sorry for them because God has not revealed Himself to them because they don't want to know Him. Why is a preacher telling people that God is going to bless you, bless you with this and that? Because Almighty God has not revealed Himself. If he had revealed, this preacher wouldn't have been preaching this way. God uses different means to bring people closer to him. Maybe it's sickness, financial crisis, family issues, anything. These are all means that God uses so, to bring a person closer to him. Why? So that through these, he may know the truth. But today, majority of people, they, they just want to get rid of their problems and that's, that's it. If you look at these prosperity preachers, the number of followers they have, why are they coming? They are just coming because someone is saying that you will be blessed. Their only concern is that blessing. The problems will be solved. And once it is solved, they are gone. Look at those who are no more coming to church and you ask why. I went there because I had an issue. Now the issue is done. So I don't have to come, but I'll tell others if anyone else has any issues, he can go there. See, when we catch a fish, 
we use that bait. We have the hook and the bait is there. And it is used to catch that fish. So once that fish gets hooked, we know it because of the pull on the string. And slowly, slowly we draw the fish close, take it out of the water and patiently remove the hook from the mouth of the fish. And what do we do next? Throw it back into the river or put it in a basket. Now, what are these prosperity preachers doing? God bringing these people because they have issues in their life so that they can know what sin is and know the heart of God and come to that repentance and experience that redemption in their life. But what do these prosperity preachers do? They bring them, remove the hook, throw it back into the water. And they are again coming when they have another issues. Can you see why this is happening? Because they don't want to know the truth. God is not revealed. Dear brothers and sisters, here the word says, I will give, will I give to eat of the hidden manna, the deep spiritual truths, the real nature of God. Example, Deuteronomy chapter 29, verse 29. Deuteronomy 29, verse 29. Here we read, The secret things belong unto the Lord our God, but those things which are revealed belong unto us and to our children forever, that we may do all the words of this law. Secret things belong unto the Lord our God. See, there are things that God has not revealed completely. If He wants, He can reveal. He can. Jesus could have revealed His glory completely. Can you see? Half. As He's walking as man, He's not revealing His glory. Here also. There are mysteries. And we too want to know what these mysteries are. Many are sick. We pray that they may be healed, but they are not healed. And we want to know, Lord, what is the reason that they are not healed? So many questions. But God doesn't answer all because there is a time that He will reveal His mysteries. He doesn't reveal everything now because if He reveals, we won't be able to understand it. That's the difference between God and us with our limited knowledge. We won't be able to understand everything. What is required, He has already revealed. Two and a half, one and a half. One and a half, half of three. Three stands for manifestation. So God wants to reveal himself to us. But do I want to know him more? Am I interested in his blessings or am I interested in him? Next. When we look at, uh, when we look at the width, uh, the length, it's two and a half. That's Half of five. Now five stands for grace. The length of the ark shows grace of God. Let's turn to Second Timothy chapter one, verse nine. Second Timothy chapter one, verse nine. Here it says, "Who had saved us and called us with a holy calling?" not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. Grace that has been given to us in Christ Jesus before the world began. The length shows before the world began the length of God's grace. The length of God's grace, along with that, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 7. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 7. 
that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus again that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us what do we mean by that exceeding riches of his grace now today when we look at our life all that we have all that we have is it not because of the abundance of his grace tonight have when you relax can you just look back at your life and all that you have and where god has placed you is it not god's grace because he has been gracious look at where we are today amazing grace so how grateful we have to be for this for this great god who has been so gracious to us next when we look at the width and the height have you seen both are same one and a half cubit is the width the breadth and the height is one and a half what does that stand for relationship with man relationship with god both equal relationship with man relationship with god when christ was asked which is the greatest commandment what was the answer you will love thy god with all your heart that's fine we are ready to do that second if you love your god with all your heart you will love your neighbor as yourself relationship with man relationship with god as we are studying the word let's look at our life are these both equal in our life many of us relationship with man is fine but relationship with god is not equal for some relationship with god is good but relationship with people no that's not the way it's supposed to be look at the life of jesus john 11 john chapter 11 4 to 6 john chapter 11 verse 4 to 6 when jesus heard that he said this sickness is not unto death i'll read from verse 1 now a certain man was sick named lazarus of bethany the town of mary and her sister martha it was that mary who anointed the lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair whose brother lazarus was sick therefore his sister sent unto him saying Lord behold he whom thou lovest is sick look at the answer when jesus heard that he said this sickness is not unto death but for the glory of god that the son of man might be glorified by it now jesus loved martha and her sister and lazarus when he had heard therefore that he was sick he abode two days still in the same place where he was so look at the dealings of christ with the people he is not rushing immediately why this sickness is not unto death but for the glory of god his dealing with people the principle that he followed was god should be glorified let us look at ourselves our dealings with others what is the principle that we follow while we are dealing with men and women 
is it for God's glory? Look at Jesus, how he stayed back for two days. In that same place he abode two days still. Why? Father should be glorified. Dear friends, as we are studying this subject, let's look at our life. We are looking at the measurement. Half. We don't know what we shall be, but we know when He shall appear, we shall be like Him. Do we want to know Him more? He wants to reveal Himself, but He'll reveal Himself only to those who have a yearning. There is a price that we have to pay if we have to know Him more. What is that price? Paul says, I count everything as done. So, do I want his blessings? And do I want him? As we study this word, we have the word in our hands in a language that we can understand. As we pray and as we meditate, will the Lord reveal the mysteries that are there in these verses? Just the measurement we are sharing. There are so much meaning in this. I showed you the altar of incense. Look at the height, width and length. There is a difference in this. But it is God who has to reveal why it is like that and why here it is the other way around. And as we look at those measurements, there are so many things to learn. The length, two and a half, half of five. The length of God's grace, eternal God, the abundance of grace, riches of His grace. We pray that the Lord may fill our hearts with a desire. Lord, I want to know you more. May that yearning be there in us. And as we yearn, the Lord will reveal his word. And as, we, uh, as the word is revealed, our spiritual man becomes stronger and stronger. Knowing God more closely. And that boldness comes and we are able to face the challenges that are there before us. And then as we studied relationship with man, relationship with God. How is my relationship with God and how is my relationship with man? We need to look at our own life in these days. How am I walking? Is God pleased? Is heaven being glorified in my relationship? If heaven is not glorified, then how can I have that communion with God? In my walk, in my talk, the world has to see Christ. In my walk and my talk, now, as we were meditating on the wood that is used, can you see the way Christ conducted himself? Today, man, we, Christ, he did not reveal himself completely. But look at us. We, we try to, we try to show off. Queen Sheba says, what was told to me was just half. Everything was not told. But look at us, we exaggerate. We exaggerate. We like exaggerating. Showing off. Not what we are, but showing off. But on the other hand, look at Christ, who humbled himself so much who can heal himself. 
But can you look at him bearing that pain? The one who could heal himself. He knows what pain is. That's how much God loves us. The mind of Christ. Aren't we all supposed to have that same mind? As we close, let us close our eyes, bow our head and meditate on the word. From now on, classes will be for 40 to 45 minutes. Because as we study more and more, we are going into the depth. And we pray that the Lord helps us to understand the depth. Today we have looked at the measurement. Previous days we looked at the material that has been used. The glory that's revealed to the high priest to the children of Israel, not everything, half, little. What will heaven be like? So many people have written songs imagining the glory that's waiting. Christ says, no eyes have seen. Hallelujah. As the coming of the Lord draws nearer and nearer, Is that yearning within me growing? The manifestation of Christ. Hallelujah. The length of God's grace. My relationship with God and my relationship with others are the equal. Let's pray. Father, We praise you and thank you for this time. Lord, as we have been meditating on the measurements of the Ark of the Covenant, thank you, Lord, for revealing the depths. Father, help each one of us to meditate on your word. Know you more closely, more intimately, and be strengthened. Thank you, Lord, for the high calling you have given us. Thank you for your precious word. Lead us and guide us. May our life be for your glory. Anyone who sees us may see you only. In Jesus' most holy name we pray. Amen. May the love of God the Father, grace of Son Jesus Christ, and the communion of the Holy Spirit Be with each and every one of us till the coming of our Lord. Amen and amen. May the Lord bless all of us. Uphold us in your prayers. Uh, Friday we have the sisters class. Saturday we have the youth class. Sunday, if God be willing, Sunday we'll have the worship service. The coming of the Lord tarries. If any one of you has any questions in regard to the subject that we are learning, You are free to visit our website and then there is a section where it's mentioned, ask. You can send your questions and we'll try a level best. God's help to help you find the answer for the questions. May the Lord bless all of us. Uphold us in your prayers. Maranatha.